guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today's episode, we're shooting in honor of our friends Henry and Nico over at Vintage Motor Works, who built this car as well as a lot of other cars for Nino. Unfortunately, last Saturday, we lost our friend Henry in a tragic car accident here in Sun Valley. We're gonna put a GoFundMe link down in the description of this video. If you feel compelled to support the family and the Vintage Motor Works shop, would absolutely love your support. Sorry to start the video with a bummer, but it really matters to us to honor Henry today. So we're gonna dig in on this car and talk about what the Vintage Motor Works guys did. So we start off with a 1974 260Z. Personally, one of my favorite cars of all time. I love the 240s and the 260s. As a matter of fact, the first ticket I ever got in my life was in a 240Z with Weber's. It was my mom's car. This car was a California car. It went over to the UK, spent a number of years in the UK, that owner did a lot of upgrades to this car because not only did he drive it all the time, he also liked to track it. One thing that was done to this car right away was to give it some upgraded suspension. So the suspension's from a company called Technotoy. And as you can see, these are fully adjustable. You can deal with, I'm assuming, this is for caster and camber, as well as the shock fully adjustable for, for compression and rebound. It does have a cage, it's not a full cage, but it is caged, again, giving the car more rigidity. As you can see, he did some pretty cool flares on it. And any of you guys that have watched for a while, you know I'm not a big fan of the riveted, bolted, you know, the exposed hardware on flares. But on JDM cars, I can really go with it, especially on classic JDM like this. And this car is overall immaculate, but as you get close, you're gonna find little things on this because this car has been driven and it's been driven a lot and it's been driven hard. I love that they went with the Rotiform wheels, obviously a highly reputable company, great in the JDM community, and obviously a really killer looking wheel. Up front, it's running a 195 50 15, and out back here, it's running a 245 40 15. I like that it's got sidewall, it's got meat, and on this small of a car, it's a serious upgrade in tire. You got a lot more obviously rubber hitting the ground. I love a couple of the other subtle little things, you know? I like the taller spoiler on the back. I mean, does it really give us that much downforce? You know, I don't know, man, but it sure looks cool. And I love this front splitter on the car. You know, it looks, it looks like a track prep classic JDM, which is really what this car is. You know, something I noticed when, when Nino pulled in today too, is how immaculate the headlight covers are. The other thing, very cool. Not a whole ton of visibility you're getting from these side views, but man, they sure look right on this car. They really look right on here. All right, so let's check this out because this is pretty beautiful. I think we can just take a moment right now and go, ooh, ooh, because it really is clean. You know, it's, it's immaculate. The suspension was already done on this car, but Henry and Nico took it all apart because he had all different kinds of colors and stuff. So they powder coated everything, cleaned everything up, put it all back together. But when the car came over here, it was still the original 2.6 liter motor. It did have the Weber side drafts on here, but two of the cylinders were completely dead. No compression to two of the cylinders. One of the things Henry over at Vintage has always been known for is his engine work. He rebuilds engines himself, machines everything in-house. So this has been basically stroked from a 2.6 to a 2.9. They've increased power on this. It should be making around 235 to 240 at the tires where this car bone stock would have had in the range of about 175 horsepower at the crank. The stroker kit was from Rebello Racing. JE Pistons, Crower Rods, they did an upgraded racing oil pan from Moroso on here. I haven't driven it yet, but from what I understand, the car runs incredibly well and revs up to somewhere around 7,500 RPMs. And I know Nino well enough to know if it goes there, he goes there with it. It already had uh, front and rear disc brakes. The rear disc brakes were also upgraded over at Vintage. They, they uh, went up to Willwood brakes on the rear. I don't know the sizes. I would have loved to have shot this with Henry, believe me. It has been upgraded to disc, all four, and Willwood at the rear of the car. You know, if any of you guys have seen any of the Nino episodes, the guy's got a lot of big horsepower cars. This one, his intent wasn't to make it a big horsepower car. He had a Z when he was in his 20s, and he always said someday he would have one again. Here he is. 
Now, let's look in this interior, because for one, I just wish you guys could smell this leather. I love these Cobra seats. I'm not a big fan typically of short back seats, but in this car, I can go with it. I just think it really works in here. But I mean, this it is such soft, buttery leather. I gotta guess this is Italian leather. I can't imagine it's not with it smelling like this and being as soft as this. I mean, it's, it's really extraordinary. But I just love how cleaned up it is. I love the center console. I like the wood shifter. The only, and this interior, I mean, Nino scored, man. This interior was already done. The only thing Nino did to it was you'll see in the floor mats and in the back here, put the Z pattern on there. And he had the steering wheel, which was wood before. He had it wrapped in matching leather to fit the car. I'm noticing that they've upgraded to an auto meter, speedo and tack. They've upgraded from uh, what would have been a standard four speed. This car has been pushed up to a five speed trans. Sorry guys, I don't have the details on what transmission it is, but it is a five speed. Nino said he never sees fifth speed because fourth year is plenty for him to have fun with the car. You know, at this point, I wanna put my hands on this Momo steering wheel. I wanna fire this sucker up and go for a drive. So let's go for a drive. Before we go for a drive, today's episode is being brought to you by Elide Fire and the Elide Fireball. This is something you want to have anywhere you run the risk of electrical fire, be it in the engine bay of your car, marine applications, in your home. The way it works is upon direct contact with an open flame, the fireball explodes emitting a non-toxic powder, ultimately extinguishing the fire and saving your life. So for more information, head over to elidefireus.com. Now let's go for a drive. Ah, oh, man. I tell you this much, the, the first car I got a ticket in was my mom's 1970 240Z. And I remember thinking that car was fast back then. Uh, I can already tell this is a different game. And this interior is just spectacular, man. This is really beautiful. Man, you can tell this thing's set up to drive. Big thanks, Nino, for letting us take your car out and shoot it today. Man, this car sounds so good. And these seats are super comfy because this car is pretty damn stiff, I can tell you that. But it's, uh, I don't know, instantly I just, it takes me back to a time. I've always had a thing for this car, I suppose, since I, I got to drive one a lot when I was a kid. Ah, this car makes some great pops. I'm not talking about, you know, you guys know the guys I'm talking about, the ones that rev their car just so they can let off and hear it pop and shoot out a little pea shooter flame. No, not this. This is a properly tuned car. I mean, these Webers are so dialed on here. I'm looking forward to getting away from the cars, which we'll do in a few minutes here so I can get up in the, in the RPMs a little bit. I've only hit up around five grand so far. You know, and again, this car doesn't have that neck breaking horsepower. We're talking 230, 240, somewhere in that range to the tires. But remember, we're talking about a car here that weighs roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2,500 pounds. So power to weight comes into play. These aren't straight line cars. This was never intended to be a straight line bruiser. It's a sports car. Definitely putting a smile on my face, man. So that's about 6,500 right there. 
It just keeps pulling the whole time, definitely. like a toy. How you doing? What's up, dude? You're going to be on our video. <laughs> set up to handle I mean you know not like we're going through any hard turns or anything but I mean I'm barely turning this car pedals are set up nice too easy to heel toe seems like the sweet spot is like 4500 to about 6500 Hooks and goes, man. Really exceptional Z, you guys. And this is a testament to the work that Henry, Nico, and the guys at Vintage Motor Works do. Thanks for hanging and watching. See you in the next episode. All right, man. Later. This is Henry. This is son Nico, father and son team building cars together. You see, where I come from are the Specialized in the Jaguars, most English cars. Okay. But at the same time, I come up from a hot rod world where my hobby was. Got it. So I kind of combine two together a lot of times, like when I build cars. Yeah.